Bienvenue à tous. Euh, il me fait plaisir aujourd'hui de présider cette finance euh, de thèse en guise de représentant de l'Université Laval. Je suis le directeur du programme de biologie et immunologie. Donc, euh, Madame euh, Trinita a présenté une thèse à l'Université Laval et les membres du jury s'est présents l'ont évalué. Donc, nous avons le plaisir d'accueillir Madame Catherine La Rochelle euh, de l'Université de Montréal. Bonjour. Euh, Monsieur Steve Lacroix de l'Université Laval, bonjour. Monsieur Fazé Oudjet de l'Université Laval aussi. Et mes acteurs de recherche, Monsieur Manu Ramagutti, bonjour. Donc, euh, Madame Doyce, euh, je vous prie de nous faire une brève présentation de votre travail de recherche et par la suite, je passerai la parole au membre du jury pour une période de questions. All right, thank you so much for the kind introduction, Dr. Jill Bird, and uh, I want to thank uh, everyone, all of your members, and my family from Canada, Shul family, everybody uh, that represents me, thank you for being here, and uh, so let's get started. Um, so the title of my project is uh, Understanding Progressive CNS Autoimmunity Using Transgenic Mouse Models. So this is my talk outline, so I'll be taking you through some introductions that are necessary to <coughs> understand my project. And I'll be talking about some challenges that are in the field and the ones that I'm going to address, followed by hypothesis, objectives, and results of two of my projects, and general conclusions and um, perspectives. So let's get started with the introduction. I work on a disease called multiple sclerosis, so MS is a chronic neural degenerative disease of the central nervous system, which is composed of brain and spinal cord. So in MS, the myelin sheath, as you can see here, which is the protective covering around the axon, the nerve fiber, is destroyed. So this results in neurological disability. Canada has one of the highest rates of MS incidences in the world. As you can see here, over 100,000 people in Canada are affected with MS, and this makes the disease very important for us to study in Canada. <coughs> the etiology of uh, MS suggested several factors, such as Epstein-Barr virus infection, uh, smoking, vitamin D, and sex hormones are uh, linked to MS susceptibility. And the ones that I'm interested in is sex bias in MS. So as you can see in the slide here, women have higher disease incidence compared to men, while the disease burden is higher in men compared to women. MS is classified into four subtypes. And the first one I'm um, going to discuss is uh, primary progressive MS, where you can see there is an increase in disability. This is observed in about 10% of the MS population. And the second one is progressive relapsing, where we can see that there is increased attack, uh, increased the disability with each attack. <coughs> and the third one is uh, relapse remitting MS, where you can see there are repeated periods of attack followed by a period of uh, recovery, which is observed in about 85% of MS population. And the fourth one is usually followed by uh, 30 to 60% of relapse remitting uh, patients, and they show increase in uh, disability. While we have uh, medications or treatments for the relapse or many disease course, we don't have much help available for the second part of the disease course. So let's look at some of the MS pathology. So MS pathology consists of the appearance of lesions or the white spots that you can see in an MR image taken in a brain of an MS patient. And this is accompanied by inflammation, which is caused by the perivascular infiltration or the scene as infiltration of activated immune cells, and demyelination, reactive gliosis, and also axonal loss. And the two key important cells that I am interested in my study are T cells and B cells. So T cells express a T cell receptor, which is composed of alpha and beta chains, and they have an antigen binding site to recognize the antigen. They are further classified into CD4 or CD8 T cells based on the expression of a core receptor on their subface. <coughs> These are further classified into many different subgroups, but the ones that I am interested in my study 
are the type 1 and type 17. As you can see here, the Th1 and Tc1 cells are generated in the presence of IL-12, and they produce the cytokines IP gamma, TNF, IL-2, and TNCSF. And the TH17 or the TC17 are generated in the presence of IL-6 and TG beta, and they produce the cytokines IL-17, IL-6, TNF, and TNCSF. Under autoimmune conditions, TH17 cells can begin to produce IF and gamma, which is a classic cytokine of TH1 cells. And the germ is called uh, plasticity that I will be discussing throughout the first uh, slide. <coughs> So why do we study CD4 T cells in MS? CD4 T cells are present in MS lesions, and CD4 T cells, like I showed in the last slide, differentiated into T1 or T7 cells are um, observed in MS blood, CSF, and also MS brain. And interestingly, CD4 T cells extracted from uh, the peripheral blood of MS patients uh, show high reactivity to myelin peptides, which we could observed by the presence of increased levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines, now B cells. So many of us know that B cells are basically antibody-producing cells, and the um, antibody has two heavy chains and two light chains, and they have an antibody-binding fragment, which recognizes uh, antigen-binding fragment, which recognizes uh, the antigen and neutralizes them. B cells can also serve as antigen fastening cells for CD4 T cells, and under autoimmune conditions or inflammatory conditions, um, B cells can also release cytokines such as TNF alpha, IL6, and also GMCSF. Why do we study B cells in MS? B cells, which are called plasma cells that produce antibodies, are present in, a, in the arachnoid space in MS brain, and also antibody coated myelin or observed in MS brain. Interestingly, B cells from the CSF are able to produce and release IgG antibody, um, which makes the oligoclonal banding, and this serves as an important indicator, and it's useful for the diagnosis of MS. So now we are moving uh, on to the challenges part. So what are the challenges that we have in the field? There are limited treatments available for progress of MS. This is the, the latest uh, review that I got about the treatments from this year by Tintor. And uh, as you can see here, there are so many options available for treating relapse remitting MS. However, there are limited options for treating when a patient progress, progresses uh, to a progressive disease course. And the ones uh, that I want to draw your attention is, is this one and uh, this which um, act against T cells and B cells. And the second challenge is, as I mentioned earlier, there is a difference between men and women in the disease incidence and also disease burden. So um, the sex bias in modulating T cell responses in MS is not clearly, uh, clearly recapsulated. And the third one is we have limited models to study chronic treatment phase of MS. In order to study these challenges, we can use a tool or mouse model called experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, or EAE, and this, um, this model recapsulates inflammation, demyelination, uh, axonal loss, and also biases of MS. And EAE can be induced by two ways. Um, for example, we can induce EAE by active immunization with uh, a myelin peptide, and here I mentioned MAC 3555, which is myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein 35 to 55, which I'll be using um, through the rest of my talk. And uh, EAE can also be used by transferring adoptively um, uh, myelin-specific T cells. So around the world, there are many teams that study and use SJL mice and also V6 um, in order to study EAE. SJL mice on immunization with PL3 peptide results in a relapse from disease course, and V6 mice upon immunization with MAC 3555 induces two forms of disease course based on their dosage. And thirdly, very interesting model here, not mice, upon immunization with MAC 3555 recapitulates um, relapse remitting to secondary progressive disease course. 
So we are really interested in this uh, model. And the only disadvantage here is that we cannot really isolate the role of, of an individual T cell or B cell in this model because we use uh, adjunct immunization. So if we want to study the individual role of T cells or B cells specific for myelin, we need to have a transgenic mice that has their TCR or BCR specific for model. So I will be using a couple of mice for my study. And uh, so the first one is a T cell receptor transgenic mouse that has a T cell res receptor specific for MOD 3555. And in the second part, um, I use another mice which has antibodies that are specific for MOD. So let's see how these mice were generated. 1C6 mice were generated by um, Dr. Anna Anderson. And um, so this is how the mice is generated. Um, she immunized the uh, not mice with MOD 3555, and she isolated cells that are reactive to MOD 3555. And she identified that the CD4 T cells um, that has V alpha 5 and V beta 7 expression on their TCR are reactive to MOD 3555. Now these TCRs are linearized and injected into oocyte of a non-mice, and the result is 1C6 mice that has both CD4 and CD8 T cells responsive to MOD 3555. So for the second part of my thesis, I used another mice that I mentioned before. It's a BCR transgenic mice, where, um, as I mentioned earlier, B cells are antibody-producing cells. So in order to generate um, a mouse with the antibodies that are specific for MOG, they linearize um, IGH, IGH chain, a genome that is specific for MOG, and then it is incorporated into the embryonic stem cells, and these stem cells, uh, embryonic stem cells that are positive for IGH MOG are implanted into the blastocyst of a B6 mice, and this gets re-implanted into the pseudomother, and the progeny has antibodies that are specific for MOG. Uh, and we cross them to a not bad one for my studies. So let me remind you the challenges, again, that there are limited models to study chronic case of MS and also sex bias and modulating T cell in MS is not clearly encapsulated. So I designed a study to address these challenges. So my hypothesis one is 1C6 affect our CD4 T cells are capable of inducing biphasic DAE and that especially T817 cells from nails can induce severe forms of DAE. And my objective here is to develop a mass model that can recapitulate the severity of MS, especially in males. So this is my experimental setup. So we uh, took the 1C6 mice and extracted um, spleen and the lymph nodes from these mice, and also saw that for CD4 positive, CD6 to 2 L high positive, uh, high um, naive CD4 T cells, and they are cultured in a plate coated with anti CD3 and anti CD28 for stimulation, and they are differentiated with the differentiation cytokines, which is for TH1, it's IL12 and anti IL4 on the first day, uh, versus IL6. TJ beta and anti IF gamma uh, for T17. After two days of culture, these cells are transferred into a non coated plate along with either IL2 for TH1 or IL23 for T17. After five days of culture, these cells are transferred into a non skip mice and we observe for signs of EAE and score them between 0 and 5. So we're moving on to the result part. Initially, we studied TH1 cells. Let me remind you again, TH1 cells are the cells that produce IF gamma, TNF alpha, IL2, and also GNCSF. And several studies were done on TH1 cells before, and it was thought that it's the TH1 cells that are very important in the immunopathogenesis of um, MS. So we consider looking at TH1 cells. And this is our culture setup, like I mentioned before. We cultured male versus uh, female T cells. And we injected male TH, uh, 
female Th1 cells to female matke or male Th1 cells to male matke. And this is the result that we got, that uh, male Th1 cells induce me of greater severity than females. And this is, this is an interesting data, but the story did not stop there. So we moved on to study another type of cell that's called Th17 cell. Th17 cell, in the last 20 years, many people have studied their importance, um, and uh, they are highly pathogenic cells, especially under autoimmune conditions. So um, Th17 cells, as I mentioned before, they release IL-17, IL-6, TNF-alpha, and also GMCSF. So we had a similar setup, like the previous, um, previous experiment, except for the cytokines were different. And we found a surprising result here, and it's um, a female Th17 cells in the relapse remaining disease course, while the male cells uh, interestingly, they induced two forms of disease course. One that is rapid, as you can see here, it's very severe and attained the end point very early, so we call them rapid. And the other one, which is less severe, and it attained the end point at day 70. This is really promising because, as, um, as many of you know, who has um, a background in MS, uh, not all the men develop a progressive disease. There are some that develop relapse uh MS. So this is really interesting for us. So we wanted to ask the next question, if the male Th17s are the ones that are responsible for inducing such a severe disease. So we did a very critical study in which we took the male Th17 cells, injected them into either male or female masked mice, or we took the female Th17 cells, injected them into um, male or female masked mice, which is a sex mismatch study. And what we found is that as you can see here in these two graphs, male cells, it, irrespective of the sex of the recipient mice, they induce male th 17 cells, induce severe EAE compared to the female th 17 cells. So we wanted to look at uh, different time points, what are the TH17 cells doing and inducing this um, EAE in the recipient mice? And uh, I sacrificed the mice at uh, three different time points. So let's look at what's happening at the onset. So we want to look at the CNS damage, first of all. So we looked at uh, the brain, we looked at the optic nerve and spinal cord, and due to the interest of time, I'm going to show uh, the optic nerve and spinal cord. And as you can see here, uh, TH17 male cells infiltrated into, um, into the optic nerve and caused demyelination and also axonal loss, while the female cells did not. And in the spinal cord, male cells again produce uh, more inflammatory foci per section compared to the female Th17 cells. Then we wanted to look at the periphery, what, what are the Th17 cells doing in the periphery, because we know some drugs like phenolimod, they block the aggression of the CD4 T cell out of, out of the lymph nodes so that they are, they are not permitted into the peripheral blood or into the CNS. So we wanted to look at the periphery and again, I want to remind uh, the fact that Th17 cells uh, could switch their production towards um, IF and gamma, and that's why we looked at both IF and gamma and also IL-17. And here, as you can see, male Th17 cells produce the higher levels of IF and gamma. So this suggests that male Th17 cells are highly inflammatory with the production of higher levels of IF and gamma at onset. And because we saw that, we wanted to look at them at the second time point, which is the first relapse. Again, here, we can see that male Th17 cells produced a higher levels of uh, IF and gamma, while there was very little amount of IL-17 in both the cases. Third time point is the end point, very crucial, and this, this is where all the different views are coming from. So we looked at the end point, and the CNS especially, and we found that especially in the rapid group, as you can see here, 
there is a higher prediction of IF and gamma compared to even the female group or even male D17. So this suggests that our T17 cells that induce the severe disease has undergone a phenotypic plasticity, and this is associated with the rapid disease. <coughs> so as a next step, we were so curious about what are the genetic signature that's happening in these cells that are really making them transition from an IL-17 producer to an IF and gamma producer. So Gabriel et al. in 2015 published a paper in which he followed the transition stage of his D17 cell from the beginning until the time that they produced a higher level of interferon gamma. And uh, he mentioned that there are three, three transient states and the first one is pre-TH1-like, and as you can see, these are the signature gene trans transcripts that he observed. Second is TH1, TH17-like effector, and these are the uh, gene transcript. And third is TH1-like memory, and these are the transcripts. The important thing here that we, no that we need to notice here is that each transient state has their own gene transcripts that are expressed at each level. So obviously, as the next step, we wanted to look at all of these gene transcripts in my model. So what we did is we, uh, we did a simple culture of T17 and we did a couple of experiments. The first one in which the mice, the T17 male group, they showed a rapid disease. And we sacrificed the female also at the same time point as the males, and so it's called female early. And the second group is um, one are the ones that stayed alive until T17. So first we looked at pre-TH1-like uh, group and we looked at uh, the expression of all the four genes and we found and we found that either in the male rapid or male di 17 group, all these genes are highly expressed compared to the female. And in the second group, same thing. So uh, male rapid or male day 70, they express higher levels of genes compared to their female counterparts. Thirdly, TH1 uh, like memory group, except for IL2 receptor A and SAM SN1, all the rest of the candidate genes that we see here, they were highly expressed by the male TH17 cells compared to the female uh, counterparts. So to summarize everything, I know this is like a lot of data, so I summarize everything. So um, there are five targets, uh, gene transcripts that are expressed by male rapid compared to their female counterparts. And these five transcripts are expressed, uh, highly expressed by male D70 also. And there are many other genes that are also expressed and a high level in male D70 compared to female D70. So obviously we want to target all these, all these genes to understand their purpose in um, inducing a severe EAD. But there was one that was really interesting for us, that is IL-18 receptor 1. Why? Because IL-18 receptor 1 showed a twofold increase in um, TH17M rapid growth, and again, it's a surface receptor, and it could be targeted by a commercially available inhibitor, which is VX765. So VX765, it um, inhibits caspase 1 of an inflammasome complex, and so the IL-18 will not be released and cannot be available for the IL-18 <coughs> receptor 1 for further um, signaling. And VX765 also improved behavior outcome in D6 EAE. So um, what I did here was I injected VX765 once the mice attained score 2 for about 8 days. And and the result is very interesting because when we targeted IL-18 receptor 1 with the inhibitor, it reduced the AE severity. So I have shown here that male 16870 cell drives the AE progression and severity. So, and also we observed a sex bias between the female cells and also male cells. Now, what are the roles of sex hormones and sex chromosome in the disease? So um, initially I studied the role of sex, uh, sex hormones. For that, I castrated the female uh, 
sorry, male, male, <laughs> male wants to six mice versus the Xiang uh, operated control and culture with the TH17 differentiation condition and injected them into uh, male mosquito mice. And what I found here is that, as you can see here, the castration did not reduce the immune severity. So androgenic ablation uh, basically did not reduce EAE severity. So we want to check, uh, check the females also. So we did ovariectomy experiments versus the sham control, again, the same TH17 culture, and injected into a, a female Natsuki mice. And here, I found that ovariectomy did not increase the EAE severity. So I can conclude saying that sex hormones did not impact TH17 pathogens. So we studied uh, sex hormones. Now we move on to study the effect of sex chromosome. For that, we used a very interesting model, which is called four-core genotype model. This is really easy to understand. Um, <laughs> pay attention, it's really easy. I have simplified it, I did my best. Okay, so um, we got, the, um, these mice were generated by Arnold and Shannon in um, 2009. So what they did is they took uh, female XX mice and they crossed to XY minus Stry mice. Stry is the test of determining gene. It is knocked out of the Y chromosome and then implemented into the autosome. So this resulted in four progenies. So these two progenies, they have male sex hormones, while the chromosome had either XX stri or XY minus uh, stri. And there are other two progenies with female sex hormones with X and X or XY minus chromosomal complement. We were really interested in this group because we wanted to study TH17 pathogenicity in males, basically. So what we did is we uh, generated a F1 B6 cross 2 nod mice, and we, for these two groups, we immunized them with uh, Mach 3555, and we found that TD stri XY stri knockout showed a higher uh, disease, increased disease severity compared to TG stri XX. Now we wanted to look at the immune set population in this unit. So we extracted CD4 T cells from the CNS of these mice and we did flow cytometry anal analysis and we found that TG stri XY stri knockout cells, CD4 T cells, had higher levels of uh, IF and gamma and also IL-17. So this shows uh, that the male compartment, the XY uh, complement is important in disease and severity and also the SMP pathogenicity. So as the next step, we crossed these mice to 1C6 and we did a simple study. We generated the culture like I showed before and interestingly, we found that TH17 TG stri XY stri NACA, which are in the red, they showed increased EAE severity. So as a next step, we wanted to study what are the genetic uh, components or gene signatures behind this uh, chromosome. So we looked at X-linked genes um, to understand if they can repress the H17 pathogenicity. So as many of us know that females have two X chromosomes and males have one uh, X chromosome and during embryogenesis one of them gets in, uh, inactivated. So the process is called second copy silencing or X chromosome inactivation. But this is not 100% perfect. About 30% of the genes can escape the silencing process. So um, what we did is we collaborated with uh, Dr. Arnaud Duan, who, who did a uh, bioinformatics analysis for us, and we used the publicly available RNA-seq uh, data sets, and um, the, from the TH17 cells that are present in the CNRs or in the lymph node or in the gene of the b 6 a mice, and the Cells that are in the CNS are considered to be pathogenic and in the lymph node are considered to be non-pathogenic. And we consider the genes that are less expressed 
in the GSMP cells in the, in, the, in the CNS and compare them to a set of uh, genes that escape to second copy silencing. So we ended up with three targets and we wanted to look at all these uh, three targets. In our model, so I already had the cells, so we did QPR, a qPCR experiment and we found that all these targets, all these three targets are highly expressed by the female, uh, females either at an early time point or at a, a day 70 time point. So we were curious to know if this is what is happening in humans. So we collaborated with Dr. Craig Moore from the University of uh, Newfoundland and we did some human studies where um, we isolated CD4 T cells from the peripheral blood of MS patients, both men and women, and looked for the expression of these three genes. And, um, and we found out that GERD1C is upregulated in the case of women compared to the men, making it a very important target uh, for our study, so there are ongoing experiments right now to target and to understand the role of GERD one c right now. So, to summarize everything what, what I showed in the first part, male T817 cells induce severe EAE, and this is accompanied by the increased expression of IP gamma and also XT817 signature transcript. And XY chromosomal complement is important for T817 pathogenicity, which uh, resulted in a severe EAE. And female T817 cells induced a mild EAE, and these cells expressed to high levels of GERD1C. And humans and women also who are affected with MS also expressed high levels of GERD1C. So, um, so far, I've provided some data or evidences um, to solve some of the problems or challenges um, in the field, which is XY complement rather than sex hormones are important in aggravating T17 mediated pathogenicity, and also uh, one to six male T17 cells induce chronically worsening EAE in the recipient mice. We are switching gears now to the second part of the project. So I want to remind you this uh, slide because I am going to talk about the importance of the collaborative work of T cells and B cells together in EA. So, the hypothesis of my second project is presence of mod reactive B cells exacerbates CD4 T cell driven EAE. And the objective of my study is to understand the collaborative role of CD4 T cells and B cells in reducing severe EA. And this is my experimental setup where I immunized IGH mod mice versus not mice with OCK3555, which drives the obligatory CD4 T cell response. And I observed for the signs of VAE in these mice for about 15 days. And this is followed by ex vivo analysis at the, at the end point. So when I immunized uh, IGH mod mice with mod 3555, it resulted in a rapid and illegal EAE compared to not mice, and anyway, not mice at this point, they don't develop a severe disease course, but they were sacrificed at the same time point as IGH uh, mild mice. And then we looked at the CNS damage that are caused to the IGH mild mice, and as you can see here, um, there is uh, infiltration of the immune cells and also meningeal inflammation. Thirdly, I wanted to study um, the role of antibodies in this disease. As we know that these cells are antibody producing cells, so we wanted to look at IgM first because it's the first antibody that uh, these cells secrete, and we found that the levels of IgM decrease at the end point. Well, I have um, measured these antibodies at three different time points, which are in a nice pre antibody end point. And, the, and their levels decreased at the end point. This suggested that IgM has went through some fast switching. So we looked at other antibodies and we found that, yes, the IgM has undergone fast switching. 
And then we wanted to look at the immune cell infiltration in the CNS, which are associated with EAE CVRD. And so to begin with, we looked at spleen and the periphery. And the important thing that we need to note here is even though IGH mod is a B cell specific mice, there was no difference between uh, the NOD and also IGH mod in the disease. While all the other cells, uh, like the CD4, CD8, the nice cells, and neutrophils are higher in the case of the uh, IgH mob. Then we looked at CNS, and what are these cells doing in the CNS that makes them so uh, sick with severe EAE? And we found, again, there is no difference in the B cells, but there is a difference in CD4 T cells, CD8 T cells, the nice cells, and also neutrophils, because we we uh, immunize the mice with mod 35 bay and obviously it drives a fast response. So we were curious more about the CD4 T cells. So we looked intensely into CD4 T cells, and we found that the CD4 T cells that infiltrated into the CNS of these mice produced high levels of IL-17 and also GMC assets. So this suggests that they have a T17 phenotype in the CNS. Then as the next step. Um, we wanted to know if these B cells present in the IGH mob mice can be better antigen presenting cells. So for that, I did a setup in which I cultured B cells and T cells together in the presence of mod 3555 and analyzed the presence of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines. So um, what we can see here, this is a data from a 10 microgram mod 3555 simulation. And as you can see here, in, in red, the IGH mod mice induced, uh, IGH mod B cells induced C4 T cells to produce higher levels of pro inflammatory cytokines. So, in summary, IGH mod mice immunized with mod 3555 induced a CD4 T cell response that produced IL 17 and GNC and CIF in the CNS of these mice. And this resulted in uh, lethal and rapid EAE. And secondly, IGH mod B cells serve as better antigen presenting cells to CD4 T cells, which we observed through the production of the pro inflammatory cytokines. So, moving on to conclusions. So, here I have provided evidence that male. Once they 60 and 17 cells induced to severe EAE upon uh, adopter transfer into not thin mice through IFM gamma production and also by upregulating TH17 uh, plasticity signature genes. And also, sex hormones that, uh, do not affect TH17 pathogenicity in our model. XY chromosomal complement in TH17 cells are important in uh, aggravating EAE. Shared 1C in X chromosome, it refers to TH17 pathogenicity. And for the second part, IGH mod on an odd diagram displayed lethal EAE upon immunization with mod peptide and also by the increased number of pro inflammatory uh, CD4 T cells in the CNS of these lines. B cells from IGH mod served as better antigen presenting cells to the CD4 T cells. And these are innovative models to study molecular mechanisms underpinning chronic CNS autoimmunity. So moving on to perspective, now I've talked about CD4 cells and also B cells so far, but there's one more cell that are important in MS that is CD8 T cell. Why? CD8 T cells greatly exceed CD4 T cells in MS lesion and also in the CSF. And Granzyme, which is an effector molecule uh, sec uh, secreted by CD8 T cells, are found to be polarized in both periventricular lesion and also parenchyma of an MS brain. So I did another critical study because I have the luxury of having a mouse that has both CD4 and CD8 T cells that are specific for mod 3554. So I did um, a culture, as you can um, see um, here, I yeah I differentiated them into TH1 or TH17, TC1 or TC17, and I did a co-transfer experiment, which brought about a very promising data that suggests that when we co-transfer these mice, it induced a severe EAE. 
So what do we do in the future? So we want to isolate C4 and CD T cells from 1C6 mice and also B cells from um, IgH1 mice. We want to culture them under differentiation conditions with either type 1 or type 17 cytokines, inject them into a lymphocyte deficient not skid mice and observe for the severity of EAE. And also it will be important to note the plasticity signature genes that are important in the TH1 and TH17, RTC1, RTC17 group in the presence of B cells. And these genes could be targeted with uh, inhibitors. And also it will be important to study the role of sex hormones and sex chromosomes in this uh, disease. So this is the best slide of all the presentation. Very important slide, so I want you to all, uh, all of you to pay attention to this. Very thankful for my team, especially my supervisor, who's been a big support to me, and uh, also my entire team has worked with me, especially Jelani, Esmita, and uh, and also Andrew Pasco. In the, in the beginning until the end, they were with me and they helped me a lot with many of my experiments and Nick is the first person who, who actually taught me how to do experiments really. And um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Steve Lockpa's team, especially Ben Lock who's, who's been there forever to help me with anything pretty much, especially histology and also um, Dr. Luke Lallier's team for for critical discussions and also sharing the antibodies whenever I need it. And also um, Dr. Carolyn Tilbert, Dr. Pavsi, and Dr. Maria for critical discussions and also um, making me um, more interested in immunology basically. And uh, Dr. Shikati's uh, team and <coughs> her postdocs helped me with um, behavior studies Dr. Arnaud Dewat's team for bioinformatics analysis, Dr. David Gosling's team, and Dr. Serge uh, Reveille's team for critical discussion. And very important, laboratory of cytometry, Alex Brunet is here, and very thankful that he helped me with all my experiments in the last six years. I don't know I, uh, what I would have done without this uh, platform and his help. And I'll, I'm sorry? Do I. Yeah, 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 it's, it, it's shared. Shared opinion. Thank you, Alex. And um, all the people in animal facility, especially Karen and Kim, worked in the protocol room. Rene and Andre Brisson, they worked on my colonies. And Dr. Anna Anderson, Dr. Vijay Kushro, and Dr. <coughs> Rickley for giving us the transgenic mice. Dr. Hans Lossman for uh, histology, and Dr. Craig Moore and his team for human studies. And so thankful to all the funding organizations without which I would not have done any of the experiments. I am personally funded by MS Society of Canada. And thank you for your attention.